and welcome back to where we left off, ladies and gentlemen. I'm SigRev2, and you're here at the second part of me going through Alt Press's Green Day Song by Song Ranking. We've left off at number 99, which is Outlaws, which I strongly disagree with. And I'm going to take a quick sip of my lovely monster juice before we get started. Now, we've seen a lot of absolute jams get just tossed out. Before we even hit number 100. There's 170 songs. And there's so many gems that were tossed out before we got to number 100. So where are we going now? Well, let's, let's scroll down and find out, shall we? 98, Let Yourself Go. One of the first songs from Uno that we heard. It's okay. I'm actually not a big fan of it, but I don't hate it. It's like most of the trilogy. It's okay. I know a lot of people really like this one. They're like, oh, they're going back to their pop rock, pop rock, pop punk roots. I get it. I get it. I get it. But it's, it's, mm, they could have done it so much better. Who wrote Holden Caulfield? Uh, damn. Uh, <laughs> I guess they really like Let Yourself Go because uh, they put it here. Um, oh, yeah. As you can see, I'm subscribed. As I should be. As you should be. Go subscribe to the official Green Day channel if you haven't already. God damn it. Yeah, who wrote Holden, Holden Caulfield? It's a good song for Kaplunk. I know a lot of people like it more than I would. I probably wouldn't have it in my top 100, but it's it's okay for what it is. I would rather just read The Catcher in the Rye, though. That's a great book if you haven't read it. Dominated Love Slave? Nah. Nah. Top 100? Top 100 Dominated Love Slave. That's... No. I don't even have any more comments on that. Just no. Uptight? I would have that significantly higher. Uptight's... Such a good song. Such a good song. Meet Me on the Roof. I might actually have that higher on my list. I think... I, I, I think I mentioned it in part one, which was like five minutes ago from me recording part two. I mentioned like, oh, nothing on uh, Father of All Meets matches up on anything on Insomniac. That's not exactly true. Meet Me on the Roof is a fantastic song. And I will fight on the hill till my death. Yeah, that's how that saying goes. <laughs> Meet Me on the Roof. It's so fun and catchy and it's just so... Mm. In the video they did for it, it's pretty cute, too. Stuart in the Avenue! Oh! Oh, that sounds so bad, though! Oh, no! <laughs> I'm about to cry on camera again. Stuart in the Avenue at number 93. Man, fuck you. Fuck you. That song's so good. How? How could you not have that in like your top 50 at least? Stay the Night. It's one of the better songs on Uno. I can see why it's... It's about in the middle spot, I guess. I, yeah, it's about in the middle spot. Uh, yeah. It's a good song on Uno. Yeah, I'd say it's one of my favorites on it. But, yeah, the trilogy is just... Like, I have a soft spot for Uno, but I'm not going to sit here and say that it's high-quality Green Day. Because it's not. <laughs> I, I could be delusional as all fucking hell with this band, and I could still admit that. Revolution Radio, 91. I would have that... Yeah. I'd say it around the mid-tier. I like it. It's very reminiscent of, like, Nimrod era Green Day, at least in terms of the melody and structure. So, I don't... I can't get too mad at this. Brat at number 90. Like, as much as I love Insomniac, Brat would be one of the lower ones, lower rated songs on my ranking of it. Uh, Song of the... Se Bruh! How? Okay... They did this shit in the first part. They took an intro track and put it above two of the best fucking songs on Dose. They fucking put, uh, 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 
see you tonight. They put see you tonight above lazy bones and wild one. And they're doing this shit. They're putting song of the fucking century above over like most of anything that like 170 to 100. Like I barely considered a song in general. Let alone better than fucking... <sighs> You're killing me, Smalls. I want, I, I've been kind of ignoring the comments that they have on here. I want to know. I want to know why this is so high. We'd love to see Green Day open a three-hour set with a short tune that truly introduced 21st Century Breakdown in such a solid manner. It would make our millennium. So what's the reasoning? <laughs> What's the reasoning? Because you want to see them open a long show with a mediocre intro? Mediocre at best? Like, if there was something to it, then maybe I would give a fuck. But it's literally just Billy singing a melody over radio sounds and shit. Like, there's nothing substantial to it. Like, oh, well, it opens up the story of 21st Century Breakdown. It's like, I get it. And I like that it has a nice wraparound near the end with American Eulogy. I get it. I get it. But 89. Out of 170 songs, 89. Okay. A Deadbeat Holiday, 88. Not one of my favorite songs. From warning. I there uh, okay. Uh, she's a rebel at eighty seven. Yeah, it's probably one of my least favorite on American Idiot. Not that I have a problem with it, but um it it, it kind of feels like jagged coming off of Give Me Novocaine. I know that um digital versions of American Idiot, uh they put the song, like they, they pretty much surgically attach the songs together, a lot of them. So it's like, like, Are We the Waiting slash St. Jimmy. So I guess it would make more sense in that context, kind of making every song a bit of a mini opera, but I don't know. Be able to glory, little girl. That's one of my least favorite songs from 21st Century Breakdown. I've, I know some of my buddies uh, who've listened to this album. They would rank it higher up, but I've, mm, I don't, I don't know. I, cause it's like, we're, we're past the point where the songs are, I, I guess they'd be bad. Like if we're ranking them like, okay, well the ones at the bottom are the bad ones. The ones at the top are the best ones. So we're past the bad point. We're slightly edging past the point where they're just mediocre. And then we're getting into the good ones. This is what we're leading on to the good ones. I'm surprised they didn't pull the joke like, oh, number 86 is the song 86 because I'm hilarious. Uh, Scattered at 85, no, that's top 20. That's top 20 easily. Scattered is one of the best fucking songs Green Day has ever done. It's so un disgustingly underrated. I fucking love every single second of that. At 85, no, no. There's songs on Dookie that wish they could be as good as Scattered, and I fucking love Dookie. Church on Sunday? You're putting Church on Sunday above Castaway. Castaway is the vastly superior song. But I do love Church on Sunday. Eh, I'll give it to him. In the end, yeah, here's here comes the Dookie. We're finally up to Dookie. Uh, in the end, yeah, one of my least favorite songs on the ending stretch of that album. But would I put it so high up on my list? Because I do like Dookie a lot. Fantastic album. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I would have to probably make a list like this to figure out where I'd put it. I think... I don't want to say because of its brevity, but there could be more done with it. I would probably put it a lot lower on my list, honestly. Like, I don't hate it. There's not many Green Day songs that I hate. Like, we've already passed, I think... All of the songs from them I actively hate. But this would probably be near the bottom. Or at, le at least in the transitional period from when the hatred to they're just okay, alright. Like, they're mediocre. 
because as much as as much as uh, we don't want to admit it, uh, Dookie is a not a perfect album by any stretch of the means. Uh, somewhere now, I would have that a bit higher up. Uh, it's it's a very solid way of opening an album like that, and that's pretty much the best way I can describe it at the moment. Ninety Nine Revolutions, fuck that, fuck that. That would be so much lower. That would be so much lower. Say what you will about the um, was it Occupy Wall Street situation where this song was birthed out of. Say what you will about that. Like this song was like two years too late to that, wasn't it? Like that shit happened in two thousand eleven. And then this album came out in 2012. So it was like about a year or so after that shit was relevant. And you were like, oh, here we go. Making a political statement. Who are you fooling? You, Billy Joe, by yourself. You make more money than any of us will ever see in our entire lives. And you're going to sit here and try to act like this is a genuine statement. And a genuine passing of my time. Uh, as bullshit. You lie. Nuclear Family. This is one of my favorites on Uno. I would probably have it a bit higher up. Uh, 80. I, I can respect that. I can respect that placement. Sassafras Roots. I can respect that placement. Uh, Fire Ready Aim. I cannot respect that placement. Don't sit there and try to tell me that Fire Ready Aim is better than Sassafras Roots. And any song on Dookie, really. I mean, no. That's not happening. Fire Ready Aim is not that good. Like, I, I want to get more in-depth as to why, I'm, instead of just sitting here and be like, oh, well, this song's not good because I say it's not good. But realistically, there's not much that can be said about most of the songs on Father of All Motherfuckers. Like, it's obvious that they were half-baked and just rushed out to get out of their contract with Reprise. Like, it's as simple as that. And that song is one of the highlights of that being true. At the library. Yeah, I can understand that being so low. Youngblood? Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, well, we're going to get to 75 momentarily. So, uh, Youngblood, it's one of my favorite songs on Revolution Radio. But I don't know how I feel about this. I don't know if I would have it higher up in my ranking, like stacked against some of the songs from Nimrod and Insomniac and American Idiot and whatnot. Because I do love this song, but I, I can't sit here and pretend it's some grand statement. It's... I don't know. 86, one of the best songs on Insomniac. Easy as that. I would have that so much fucking higher. Like, I'm thinking top 15. I fucking love 86. It's so goddamn good. Enema Sleepus. It's okay. I would probably have it lower on my list. Christian's Inferno. That would be near the fucking bottom, dude. That's such a fucking weak sauce song. Holy shit. Murder City. Higher. Significantly higher. Um. I keep saying significantly higher. Like... Would I actively put this? I guess it's more so like a gut reaction. Like, I see the number and I'm like, okay, no, well, I put that higher. Murder City is a great song. It's very reminiscent of the earlier Green Day sound, so if that's something that you're looking for in more modern Green Day stuff, then go for Murder City. But I don't know where I would put it in my ranking. Like, I don't hate it. I don't hate it at all. I fucking love it, but I don't. Is it better than X, Y, and Z is what I'm trying to wrap my head around here. Walking Alone at 71. I get it. I can get that ranking. I like Walking Alone. I defend it more than others. So, uh, yeah. Oh, wow. X-Kid not in, like, the top 20. I'm kind of surprised. Yeah, X-Kid, that's a pretty good ranking for X-Kid. Um, I know that people love the shit out of it when Trey came out, and it is one of the highlights on that album, I would say so, most definitely, but, I don't know, I, I think with the passing of time, it's kind of shown its true colors, if that's the best way to say it. Having a blast at 69, 
First of all, nice. Second of all, really? I would have that so much fucking higher on my list, man. That song is so good. Like, that coming off the heels of Burnout? Like, are you kidding me? That's like a one-two punch that you'll never recover from. Fuck. Viva La Gloria. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's a good song. It's average, like most of 21st Century Breakdown. St. Jimmy. So, Are We The Waiting is officially ranked higher than St. Jimmy. I don't know how I feel about that. I think Are We The Waiting... And St. Jimmy probably, like I, like I said earlier, the digital versions, they combine them. They stitch them together. I think that's really the only way where that's serviceable. I think Are We The Waiting needs St. Jimmy. Like, St. Jimmy needs to begin with Are We The Waiting. As it stands, Are We The Waiting is kind of weak. Especially compared to St. Jimmy. Like, St. Jimmy's got a disgusting amount of energy. A disgusting amount of bravado. It's such a fucking fun, rip-roaring tune. And you're gonna sit there and tell me that Are We The Waiting is better than that. Okay. It's probably gonna come up next. Hold on. Mm. Okay. There's other songs on Waiting I prefer. Jaded? I would have that a lot higher on my list. This song's Mindful Predecessor gets mentioned later, so don't get jaded. We bet you know the lyrics. This song, anyway, poser. <laughs> Extraordinary Girl. Yeah. Extraordinary, Girl's pr Extraordinary Girl is a pretty good, fun song. I would probably have it a smidge higher on my list, but I can totally understand and accept 64. American Eulogy at 63. Hmm. I don't know if I can agree with that. Uh, I would have it lower on my list. Not by a lot, but... I don't know. I would not have it so high up. It's another one of those situations where, oh, we need to have another Jesus of Suburbia. And I think it works better than a lot of the other uh, like rock operas, I guess. Like the rock opera tracks that they've tried to do that with. But I would have Forever Now ranked above that easily. Pulling Teeth, I would have that so much higher. Easily. 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 That would be so much higher. That's that's like a delicious morsel of pop punk. Like, that's as pure pop punk as pretty much you can get. Like, they played that off perfectly. And it's one of the best songs on Dookie, honestly. Uh, Bang Bang, good song. Yeah, good song. Uh, when it dropped, I was so fucking stoked. I was like, oh my god, they're gonna fucking do an album like this. And then, well, it was like, this song dropped. And then, the title track, Revolution Radio. I don't, what, did Youngblood drop after that? Or did Still, uh, Still Breathing drop? I think it was Still Breathing and then Youngblood. But yeah, I, I remember this song coming out and... Just fucking getting so goddamn hype. And it's still a rip-roaring tune. Even now, I, I can't complain too much about it. I do think that it might be a little bit lower than I would put it. I would probably have it hovering around the top 50. Walking Contradiction, one of my favorite songs on Insomniac. There's just... While it's not a good ending to Insomniac... Really, there is no proper way to end that album. So I got to give it kudos for that. Like, there's no other way. There's no other placement of that song on that album. As much as it's not a closer, there's no other way they could have closed that album. You can't just put, like, a slow jam. You can't just put a, a rest-type song at the end of Insomniac, of all albums. Uh, I would have it much higher up. I'm kind of concerned that Geek Stink Breath has not shown its head. That's not one of my favorite songs on Insomniac. And I'm, I'm starting to have a feeling that a lot of these singles, like a lot of the big popular singles, they're going to obviously be a lot higher up. Because that's how most of these music magazine online situations operate they're like oh well let's take the popular songs and put them at the top because you know 
give people a reason to scroll through this list. Uh, 59, The Forgotten. No, I would have that so much lower on there. That's such a fucking... It's such a piss, piss way to end the trilogy. And say what you will about the trilogy. It didn't need an ending like The Forgotten. You... You fucking start off the album with Brutal Love. That Brutal Love probably should have been the ending to the entire series. The Forgotten should have stayed on the Twilight soundtrack it came from. Stuck With Me, great, 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 great jam. Would have it significantly higher up. 21st Century Breakdown, the title track to the album. I... I like the song. I do. This is more of a case of the rock opera, several parts in one. And this one does it to such a good degree. But I don't know exactly where I would put it on my ranking. I think 57 is serviceable. But mm, we'll see when I eventually make an, uh, uh, an album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that'll ever happen. Uh, when I make a list like this, if I decide to make one. Oh, love. Mm, 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 that high? I don't agree with that at all. Ooh, no, 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 no. I get it. It's the first song we got from the trilogy, but that don't mean it's a good fucking song, especially above most of the songs on Uno that you've given us. Like, fuck. It's, 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 a, it's, uh, the, 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 the. It's one of those songs that's very similar in style to um, Know Your Enemy. It's very basic and very rudimentary, and I get it to an extent, but... Ugh, fuck, really? At 56? No. One for the Razorbacks? Okay. Uh, it's one of my favorite songs on Kerplunk. I would probably have it higher up at some point. This is pretty much what these, in, these videos are all about. It's like, oh, I would have it higher up. Ordinary World at 54. Hmm. I get it. I get it. It's a similar situation to, like, Good Riddance Time of Your Life, where it's not exactly the Green Day that you want, but you're really going to sit there and tell me that this song isn't beautiful as fuck? Like, god damn. Like, the last few times I listened to Revolution Radio and this song came on, I shed a tear. I'm not afraid to admit it. I shed a bit of a tear. The song's beautiful. 54? Uh, no, no way. Top 30, at least. The Grouch, okay. Jam, jam, absolute jam. I could see 43, 53. I wish it was 43. It's such a fun, angry song. And, unfortunately, I'm starting to relate to the lyrics a little bit. Minus the part about the wife and the kid. But everything else, basically, like... Last of the American Girls. Okay. Um, yeah. I could see that being so high. Great song. Like, I'm kind of struggling to think of things. Like, I always associate this song with Murder City. They flow into each other on the album. So, it's like, it's kind of hard to separate them. Last of the American Girls is significantly better than Murder City, though. Yeah, I could see it being 52. Amy, no, 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 you're funny, you're, you're funny, you're funny, list maker, Amy at 51, no, that would be near the bottom of my list, that would be no fucking question that it would be near the bottom of my list, Amy's so fucking boring and weak, and Jesus Christ, the fucking filters on his voice sound like shit, on the entire album, but this song especially because it's the only thing you can fucking focus on. Because it's just him and his shitty tube amp guitar with a, without any distortion, without anything on it. There's some fucking slight reverb, some slight delay. And all you can hear is that shitty processed vocal. And it doesn't help that the lyrics... I get it, they're about Amy Winehouse. It's supposed to be a very sentimental, touching situation and song. And I get it, I get it, but fuck... Dude, spend more than five to ten minutes writing the lyrics to your fucking songs. I distinctly remember in the Quattro documentary, you were whining and crying about how Nimrod 
oh, the lyrics, I wrote them the right before we got to recording them, and I would never vow, or I vowed to never let that happen again. But then, like, you, you, you give us boring, awful, dumb, just not good lyrics, like, in Amy. And I feel bad because like, I get it. It's supposed to be touching. It's supposed to be heartfelt. I get it. It's coming from a place of sincerity. It's coming from a place where, like, like obviously, Billy's not just like, oh, yeah, public name, passed away, here you go. Like, obviously, there's some heartfelt meaning to it, but fuck, dude. It doesn't sound like you care at all. And it it, it ruins any sentiment any sentimentality that there was to it. Fuck, I cannot speak. Holy shit. And I've got 50 more songs to go through. I'm going to have to go through a part three momentarily. And I'm going to have to do that with song 50. So let's find out what 50 is so we can move on to part three. Macy's Day Parade. I do apologize for my messy bed. Um, I was originally going to clean my room when I got home from work today. But uh, I decided to make these videos for you, the people, to watch me get upset with Macy's Day Parade being at only number 50. Fuck that, man. Macy's Day Parade is a fantastic, beautiful, amazing, awesome everything song. I don't care if it's... I don't care if it's not heavy pop, punk not like top 20 easily i don't care i don't care top 20 fuck you <laughs> I, I i'm getting so worked up over this list that basically has no bearing on my life but hey you know what something's better than nothing and i, I at this moment in time this is what's occupying my life so life is short let me get mad at some dumb shit's ranking of one of my favorite bands but anyway, number 50, you can already see 49, but uh, I'm not going to edit these videos, so uh, y you'll already know what's going to come to start the next video. But this has been SigRev2. Uh, let me know in the comments below if you agree with this ranking, if you agree with any of the things that I've said. If you think I'm a dumbass, let me know, and um, well, we'll be the judge of that. So, with all that said, see you all in part three, in part tray. Hmm, I'm as clever as Billy, aren't I? <laughs> Don't be a stranger. Have a good day.